Joel 2.1 says this, Blow the trumpet or the shofar in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is nigh at hand. Traditionally, the shofar is blown every day except Shabbat in the month leading up to the high holy holidays, Rosh Hashanah being the first, the Jewish New Year, and then, of course, Yom Kippur, the holiest day of all in Israel, the Day of Atonement. To Jewish ears, the shofar blast serves primarily as a call to repentance or a call to arms. And I won't go through all the verbiage that um, we could go through, but I just want to share just a couple of the sounds of the shofar. The first one is tekiah. And tekiah indicates stability in life and discipline and consistency in one's life. It is also considered to be the sound of the coronation of the king, which obviously brought stability to the land. Every year during Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, God is crowned the king of the universe. In Hebrew, the Jews would say this, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, Lord God, king of the universe. The second sound of the shofar is a shavarim. It represents a time of trouble. And of course, we can uh, uh, denote that to the time of preparing for war and so forth. The teruah is the next. It is a call for accomplishment. It singles or signals passivity is unacceptable in our lives and our potential must be realized. It's a challenge to all of us. And then the final one is the tekiah gadola. And we finally realize that all of our resolutions, all of the things we've done, we have to go back and start again. And it reminds me of Revelation, Pastor, where it says to go back and do your first works again. Joel chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, blow a shofar in Zion. Consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, and that's what we've done today. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babies. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Verse 17 says, let the priests who minister to Yahweh weep between the porch and the altar, let them say, spare your people, O Yahweh. Second Chronicles 7, verses 13 and 14 says, When I shut up heaven, and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence, and certainly we understand that COVID-19 has been a pestilence on our land. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We know that this pertains to the people of Israel, but we also know that this scripture can also be applied to us today. Why? Because we have been grafted into Israel. We are the wild olive branch that's been grafted in through faith, through the Son of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We, believers in Christ Jesus, have been grafted into Israel, and by faith we have become the children of Abraham. So I believe that if my people, how many of, in here, of you in here would claim to be his people this morning? Amen. Amen. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So today, we are going to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from, turn from our wicked ways, then who knows? 
he may hear from heaven. He will forgive our sin, and he will heal our land. Joel chapter 1, verse 2, hear this, you elders, and give ear all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? And certainly we understand that we live right now in unprecedented days. We have never seen days like we've seen this year. In fact, in Joel's day, it was the locusts that consumed the land. But in our day, what the worldwide pandemic left, the shutdown has taken. What the shutdown left, the racists have taken. And what the racists left, the rioters have taken. And so Joel commands us in in chapter 1, verse 5, Awake and weep and wail. And in verse 8, lament. Verse 13, gird yourselves and lament, you priests. Wail, you who minister before the altar. So we who are in the leadership of the church have a special burden, a special call to lead the people in the lament. So as I shared previously, a couple weeks ago, I've written a lament for the year 2020. And it's in the format of the book of Lamentations where each chapter is laid out according to the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But I'm not going to use the Hebrew alphabet. I'm going to use the English alphabet. A lament for the year 2020. The letter A, alone. All those who are dying alone and living alone during COVID-19. The letter B, businesses. Many will never recover and never reopen. The letter C, COVID-19. All the people and families affected by COVID-19. Over 20 million worldwide. Over 5 million in the USA. Over 762,000 Deaths worldwide, over 170,000 deaths in the USA. Some were my friends and acquaintances. The letter D, division. Perhaps our nation is more divided than at any time in modern history, racially, politically. The letter E, empty. Buildings, businesses, churches, schools, homes. The streets of Gatlinburg have been empty. The letter F, families, separated by quarantine and impacted by deaths. The letter G, graduations, have been missed or postponed. The letter H, Hispanic Americans and African Americans have a much higher percentage rate of dying according to COVID-19. The letter I, isolation, seniors and sick and isolated Seniors and sick people isolated in hospitals and nursing homes. The letter J, jobs lost or postponed. The letter K, KKK, Ku Klux Klan, and other related racist groups are still alive and well, and anti-Semitism is on the rise again. The letter L, lost jobs, lost relationships, lost family members, lost friends. The letter M, murder. Murder rates are almost doubled in our major cities right now. The letter N, Native Americans. The Native Americans still rank number one in poverty, in unemployment, in sanitation, in sickness, in imprisonment, in foster care, and in suicide. And their plight has only gotten worse during COVID-19. The letter O, overwhelmed. People are overwhelmed emotionally, financially, mental health, anxiety, suicide. The letter P, plans. Plans have been changed. Plans have been canceled. The letter Q, quiet. The streets of Gatlinburg have been quiet. Churches have been quiet. Families have been separated. People in isolation. The letter R, racism and riots in the national spotlight. Many people have been affected. The letter S, schools. Schools have been closed. The letter T, trucks. Refrigerator trucks outside hospitals to collect the bodies of the dead. The letter U, unborn. 
Over 26 million abortions so far this, wor this year worldwide. About 500,000 so far in the USA. God have mercy. The letter V, victims. Victims of human trafficking, sex and labor slaves, child abuse, domestic violence, racism, persecution. The letter W, weddings have been postponed or canceled. The letter X, crossed out. Crossed out events on our calendars. Crossed out relationships, church services, par birthday parties, family get-togethers. People can't even attend funerals. The letter Y, youth. Our kids are growing up with a new normal that limits their relationships and interaction with others. Our kids are finding out the new normal is wearing a mask. The letter Z, zenith. Has history reached its zenith in our lifetimes? Will life as we knew it ever be the same again? Will our children ever know how good we had it? Did we realize how good we had it? Did we take it for granted? Were we thankful for it? God, have mercy. So we lament. We lament all that has been lost in the year 2020. Joel chapter 1, verse 14, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, and that's what we're doing today. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of Yahweh your God and cry out to Yahweh. Well, why would we cry out to Yahweh? Because Yahweh, our Father, our God, our King, our Lord, is the only one that can do something about our plight and our situation. So we cry out to God today with one heart, with one voice. We cry out to God today. In Joel chapter 2, verse 12, Now therefore, says Yahweh, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Verse 13, so rend your heart and not your garments. Return to Yahweh your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Aren't you thankful that that's the God that we serve today? Amen. Our God is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger. He is of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. So we return to him today. The Hebrew word is shuv, to turn or to return. You're going in one direction and you turn around and go another direction. So when we return to God, we leave behind the things of this world. We leave behind the sins and the weights that would so easily beset us. We leave behind those things that would so easily drag us down, and we return to Him. Who knows, verse 14, if He will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind Him. If God had mercy on the city of Nineveh in Jonah's day and postponed their judgment, if God had mercy on the nation of Israel and postponed their judgment so many times, maybe God will have mercy on the United States of America. We need to cry out to God today, and we need to humble ourselves before Him and ask for His divine intervention. But before we ask Him for anything... What is the first step? Returning. Return to Yahweh with all our hearts. And so the, the word shuv, the Hebrew word shuv, return or turn, is the same word that is used for repentance. So today, we are going to repent. We are going to repent for our sins individually, we're going to repent for the sins of our ancestors. And I explained that last week. Why would we do that? Our ancestors were before us. They're not here today. Why would we repent of their sin? 
because those that do not know history are doomed to repeat it. And if we do not repent of the sins of our ancestors, then we are doomed to repeat them. So we're going to repent for our sin and the sins of our ancestors, the sins of our families, the sins of the church, the sins of our city and county and state and nation. So where does it begin? Well, perhaps you need to draw a circle right around yourself. It begins with us personally. If you, the United States of America is going to see revival, it's got to start within the circle of you. Oh, I want to see revival. Yeah, but do you want to change? Oh, I want to see revival. Yeah, but do you want to repent? Oh, I want to see revival. Yeah, but do you want to give up those things that are holding you back? Unless we repent, there cannot be revival in our land. So let's turn it to the first circle, and that is us, the personal circle. What is keeping me from turning to God with all my heart? Brother Joe already quoted this scripture, Revelation 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, these are the words of Jesus. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works over again. So we're going to begin our time of repentance with a time of focus on our sin and the sins of our ancestors, and the sins of our families. Now, there's no one else who can do this but you. I can't repent for you. You can't repent for me. I can't repent for your family. You have to repent for your family. I can't repent for your ancestors. You have to repent for your ancestors. And so... Right now, I'm going to ask us to find a place where you can get alone with God and to get down on your knees if that is possible. If not, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads where you are and turn your heart to the Lord and confess your sins Confess the sins of your ancestors and confess the sins of your family. Let's do that together right now, individually, getting down on our knees if possible before the Lord.
Father, we repent. We repent for those sins of commission, those sins that we've committed that we shouldn't have committed, those things that we've done that we shouldn't have done. But Father, we also repent of the sins of omission. We repent of all of the things that we should have done that we didn't do. All of the people we should have shared the gospel with, but we didn't. All of those who we should have reached out to, but we didn't. Oh God, we repent of our sins today. We repent. We humble ourselves. We pray. We seek your face. We turn from our wicked ways today. We repent. We confess our sins before you. And that word confess means to say the same thing. So we say the same thing about our sins as you say, oh God. We call it sin. We don't mince words. Sin is sin and we call it sin. We call it sin today. Oh Father, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if it were not for your grace and if it were not for your mercy, And if it were not for your love, if it were not for the shedding of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who could stand before you, O God? But it's because of our faith in Christ that we are made worthy today. But God, oh God, forgive us for taking that for granted. Forgive us, oh God, for easy grace. Forgive us, oh God for being consumed with ourselves instead of being on fire for you. Forgive us, O God, for holding out from you when we should have given all to you. O God, we repent most of all for the sin of not putting you first. O God, everything else that we have put first has become an idol to us. But Father, we Repent of that sin today, and we put you first once again in our our lives. Father, we repent of the sins of our family. We repent of the sins of our ancestors. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, we repent. We repent in Jesus' name. God, have mercy upon us. God, have mercy upon us. God, have mercy upon us. Let's continue with our time of repentance this morning. And let's turn our attention to the church. The sins of the church. Instead of being concerned with souls, we've been, atten- we've been concerned with attendance and buildings and cash. We've been apathetic to God, lukewarm at best. And we've also been divided as the body of Christ. We're coming up on the 100-year anniversary of the division between the Church of God and the Church of God of Prophecy, and that's only one division. There's so many different divisions in the body of Christ today, so many different denominations that we've lost our identity We've lost our name. In fact, the word denomination means to dename. We've lost our name. And we've compromised with the world. And 
and people can't even tell a difference between the world and the church. And so the church is left in a dreadful condition, dead, dry bones. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, those of you that can. And I'm going to ask us to cry out to God together. And I'm going to ask us to cry out to God to have mercy on his church once again. And to light the fires of revival in his church once again. Let's intercede right now. Oh God, have mercy upon us, your church. Oh God, instead of being consumed with souls, we've been consumed with other things. Oh God, we've become so apathetic and so lukewarm. Oh God, but your word says in the book of Revelation, the words of your son Jesus Christ, that you would spew us out of your mouth if, you were, if we're lukewarm. Oh God, have mercy upon us. We are lukewarm at best. Oh God, we ask Oh, God, that you would have mercy upon us. Oh, God, we're so divided as the body of Christ, Church of God and Church of God of Prophecy, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, Catholic. Oh, God, we've lost our identity and we've lost our name. But, God, we're asking in Jesus' name that you would once again gather the people of God all across this city, all across this county, all across this state, all across this nation, and regather us together as one body, one church, in Jesus' name. Oh God, we've compromised and we've become worldly. Oh God, have mercy upon us. Oh God, instead of holiness being the standard of God's people, oh God, we've become compromised. We've become worldly. Oh God, and people can't even tell the difference between the world and the church. But God, we ask in Jesus' name that you would revive your church, that the church would be a counterculture, that the church would once more be set apart and set unto you, oh God, that we would once again, Lord, be holy as you are holy, not in our own strivings, not in our own compartments, Father, but in Jesus' name, that you would make us holy by the blood of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the washing of the water of your word. Oh God, your church today, especially in America, has become dead, dry bones. Oh God, but we pray in Jesus' name that you would raise up the breath of your Holy Spirit. Raise up the breath of your Holy Spirit. And breathe upon us once again. Oh God, you are the one who has resurrection power. Resurrect your church once again. Raise up your church for such a time as this. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Oh God, with these dead, dry bones, we are nothing before you. But God, you can do anything. You can raise up these dead, dry bones as a great army of God in the last days. So do it, O oh God. Do it, O oh God. In Jesus' name. O oh God, we confess that we don't even have the words and the mindset to repent in the way that we should Oh, God, have mercy upon us today. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You may be seated for a moment. Thank you. Now we're going to move to repenting for the sins of our city and our county. 
And as I consulted with one local historian, these are the things that came to the surface as the sins of our city and our county. Our city and county has a history of bootlegging, moonshining. And as a result of that, it's inspired rebellion and addiction. And now, just since I've lived here, this city and this county has been taken over by distilleries of all things. Now, there's some who say that they can just sip and not get drunk, but I've also seen some of those people who said that end up in addiction, end up in alcoholism, end up in drugs. And so many now are overdosing on drugs. God have mercy. Also, our city and county has a, a history of prejudice and mistreatment of people of color. Our own Jamesina Miller has shared her testimony of growing up here in this county and experiencing that she wasn't even allowed to go to the hospital here. She had to go to Knoxville. She had to go to the back doors of the restaurants to get food. God have mercy. And also... Our city and county has been known for being servants of mammon. Do anything for a buck. God have mercy. I'm going to ask all of you that live in Sevierville or, the, or Sevier County to stand at this moment. And let's... Repent for the sins of our city and the sins of our county. Father, in Jesus' name, we humble ourselves before you. And we repent. We repent for the history of bootleggers. We repent, Lord, for the history of moonshiners. And Father, it's inspired rebellion and addiction in our land, in our city, and in our county. Oh God, and now people are enslaved to alcohol. People are enslaved to drugs. People are, are overdosing on drugs. And oh God, have mercy, oh God. Oh God, have mercy. Oh, it's our children, oh God. It's our children. God, have mercy. Oh God, we've been prejudiced and we've mistreated people of color. Oh God, have mercy. Oh God, we've not treated others as we wanted to be treated. Oh God, and, and that's, that's in your word, oh God, that, that we would treat others in the way that we would want to be treated, but we didn't do it, Father. Oh God, have mercy. Oh God, have mercy upon us. And Father... We've sold out to mammon as a city and as a county. We've sold out for a dollar. Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, God, have mercy. Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You can't serve both God and mammon, both God and money. Oh, God, we repent of serving money. Oh, we've been in the service of money too long. Father, oh God, have mercy. Have mercy upon us, I pray. And Father, I pray that this city and this county would be the spark and the revival fire would start to kindle 
in this city and in this county and that you would burn through this city and this county with the fire of your presence and burn away all the dross, burn away all the drugs and alcohol, burn away all the mistreatment of others, and, and burn away all, all of the service of mammon, God, and raise up for yourself a people in this city and in this county. I pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Lamar is going to lead us in a prayer for the state of Tennessee. The state of Tennessee has, has been involved in the mistreatment of Native Americans. The Trail of Tears started here in Tennessee. We've been on the wrong side of the Civil War. We've been the abortion center of the South until recently. Go ahead and lead us, Lamar. God, we come before you this morning uncomfortable as we face the sins of our own lives and the sins of our city and county and our state, Lord. We're uncomfortable when we, when we see these things, Lord, but we know that if we were comfortable, we couldn't, we couldn't repent for them, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you would... You would hear our hearts this morning, that you would come to us, that you would listen to us. Lord, we ask for repentance for the mistreatment of the Native Americans here in Tennessee, Lord. This was their home, this was their land, and through deception and um, treaties and all these things, Lord, we took their land from them. Lord, Andrew Jackson was from this state. And through him, we had the Trail of Tears, where we um, sent these Native Americans to out west, and we stole their land, Lord. And we just ask for repentance for that, Lord. We grieve for that. We grieve for the loss of life in those times, for the hardships, Lord, that we've put on the Native Americans. And now they're still suffering the re repercussions of that, Lord, the alcoholism and the, the poverty in their culture, Lord. And that's a result of this. Father, we just grieve for that. And Father, for the Civil War, Tennessee chose to secede with the South. They chose to, um, they chose to fight brother against brother to keep slavery alive, to keep the enslavement of African Americans, Lord. We repent for that. Lord, we repent for our ancestors who fought for that, for that evil and for that sin, Lord. Um, those of us like me have ancestors who owned these enslaved people who fought to keep them enslaved. Lord, we ask for repentance of that. We ask that you would um, clear our minds of all this injustice, Lord, that we would not keep that intolerance and that bigotry in our hearts that's come down from generation to generation, Father. I pray that you would <laughs> repent, that we could repent for the, the after effects of the Civil War. The KKK was founded in Tennessee, Father, in Pulaski, and brought so many untold, untold troubles and, and fear and, and death into this state from this bigotry and this hatred. Father, we repent of that now. Lord, help us to turn from that past. Help us to create a new future from there, Lord. We repent for the sins of Jim Crow and for segregation and for redlining, all these ways that we continue to keep the African Americans down. We continue to push them down, Lord, and treat them not as we would want to be treated, Father. We repent for that. And Lord, finally, f for, the, for being the abortion center of the South, Lord, for all of the innocent blood that was shed, all of the innocent lives that were that were snuffed out before they could even breathe, Lord. We just ask for repentance for that. We ask that you would um, show us mercy, even though as a state we've done this, Lord. And Father, I pray that you would give us, um, that you would forgive us for the stigma that we've put on mothers and unwed mothers and, and young mothers who feel like this was their only choice, that this is what they had to do. Lord, we repent as a church for, for help making them believe that, for not loving them, for not giving them the, need, the things that they needed um, to, to keep these children, Lord. I just pray for, for us. 
Lord, it says in your word that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Lord, help us as we come to terms with the with the past of this state we come to terms with these things father that you would renew our minds that we would we would hear from you how we should treat our brothers and sisters lord how we should treat other people who are of of different races than us lord of different colors lord i pray that you would help us to love them as we want to be loved and treat them that way father we just ask this all in jesus precious name amen amen Stay right there, Lamar, just for a moment. I'm going to ask us to respond to his prayer. I wouldn't want to live in any other state. I was born in Tennessee. And I feel the same way about our nation. I wouldn't want to live in any other nation, the United States of America. But we've got to own our past. We've got to own our sins would every person that was born in Tennessee stand together and let's agree together with Lamar's prayer right now and own the sins of our state let's pray a prayer of agreement everyone who's been born in Tennessee please stand and let's pray a prayer of agreement Father, we agree with this prayer. And we say, God, have mercy on the state of Tennessee. God, have mercy on us. God, have mercy. We know that your plans and purposes for Tennessee are greater than the sins of Tennessee. But, Father, we need a change of heart and a change of mind and a change of direction. So we agree together with this prayer and we confess these sins before you and we say, change us, O God. Transform us. Change us. Heal our land. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And now we turn to repenting for the sins of our nation. And as a guide for that, we turn to Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3 says that in the last days, God is going to judge the nations. And he's going to judge them for three things. Number one, the mistreatment of Israel. Number two, human trafficking. Number three, the shedding of innocent blood. Joel chapter 3 verse 2 says, And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. And in verse 19, Because of violence against the people of Judah. But we recall what Genesis 12, verse 3 says. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So right now today, we want to choose to bless the nation of Israel. And we're going to do that through a special offering. But we're not going to pass the offering plates we're going to do that by asking you to make your checks payable to Parkway Church of God and note on your envelope or on your check, Ministry to Israel. Church of God Ministry to Israel has helped over 150,000 Jewish people make Aliyah immigrate back to the land of Israel. And they have, they have centers in the land of Israel that help the new immigrants in getting settled uh, they, it's a wonderful ministry, and, and I want to encourage you to bless Israel today and to leave that offering in the basket in the back, or, or if, if there's those that are watching, uh, you can, and, and by the way, let's welcome all of those who are watching today on Facebook Live and tuning in via the conference call. Let's welcome them 
to our solemn assembly today. Those that are watching can give online uh, through our website, parkwaychurchofgod.org, or through our Tithely app. And, or you can just mail your contributions uh, to Parkway Church of God, 1103 Dolly Parton Parkway, Sevierville, Tennessee, 37862. We want to be part of blessing the people Israel today. But let me assure you that our blessing of the people of Israel cannot replace our repentance. We must first repent of our sins against Israel and our mistreatment of Israel. So Brother Joe is going to come and lead us in a prayer of repentance for the mistreatment of Israel. Thank you, Pastor. Just before I pray, give me two minutes to share something with you. Scriptures record more than 170 references to the land that God clearly gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land of Canaan, given to the Jews as an unconditional covenant. Fifty-five times the scriptures record that God confirmed this covenant with an oath, and 12 times God stated that it is an everlasting or eternal covenant. This small piece of real estate the size of New Jersey is one of the most highly contested pieces of land on our planet. And it has been attacked by world powers like the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs throughout history. And then, of course, we can't forget the horrible atrocities performed against the Jews by so-called Christians during the Holocaust. The Crusades, under both the Latin and Roman church, Jews were called and known as the Christ killers. They were sought out for extermination. Gathered in their synagogues, many of them burned alive. Arab superpowers called the Mamelukes, the Ottoman Empire, and of course, just a handful of years ago, some of you are old enough and probably fought in World War II, the Third Reich tried to mastermind the final solution. Many of you may not know this, but the MS St. Louis cruised off the coast of Miami back in June of 1939. Its passengers could see the lights of the city glimmering in the, in the uh, forefront there. But the United States hadn't been on the ship's original itinerary, and its passengers did not have permission to disembark in Florida. They were sent back to Germany. That boat was filled with Jews trying to escape Nazism. And as history records, nearly one third of them found their deaths in not Nazi death camps. It's absolutely amazing. Just a few years ago, I read a horrible story about how during the Holocaust, Jews were packed into train cars and they were taken to the death camps. On the way to those death camps, they would, the trains would pass the churches that were having Sunday morning church services. And the Christians in those churches, many of them strong Lutheran churches, when they heard the clattering of the trains coming and hearing the moans of the Jews, they would sing their hymns louder to drown out the sound of those that were on the trains. Obviously, many of those, if not most of those, found their death in a death camp. And just a couple years ago, I was walking on the grounds of one of the death camps in Germany. And I said to one of the park police that were there, I said, why are the grounds so uneven? We were walking on cobblestones that were sinking. And, and I said, why, why won't you repair this for the future generations? And he said, you don't understand. You're standing on top of mass graves that as the years went on, the <laughs> The bodies of the Jews were decomposing and the ground was sinking. A stark reminder of what took place. All of these people died for one reason only, just one. They were born Jews. Let's pray. Stand with me, please. Father, It is clear from your word that the Jewish race has been hand chosen by you. You took a man, Abram, and you blessed him. 
And you told him that there would be a promise associated with his life, that he would, he would replenish the earth with, with those that would be godly. And as the Jewish nation grew, and we know that they're called the light of the world, and they were to bring forth the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah of the world. And today we who are standing here as blessed people because of that, we are in Christ, as Pastor just mentioned, and we are a part of Abraham's seed spiritually. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for the way we've treated our Jewish friends just because they're Jews. We recognize that this world is trying to put a stop to who they are, trying to stop them in their own land, trying to divide the land. But Lord, we're praying today that not only will we repent, but that all of your church will repent and stand with our big brothers and sisters, the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. Jesus is a Jew. He's coming back as a Jew. He's going to step down in a Jewish city. He's going to rule and reign from that Jewish city called Jerusalem. And Lord, we recognize today the sacredness of that place. Would you bless your people, the Jew? Would you open their eyes and would you use us as Christian believers to somehow exemplify the love of this Jewish Messiah in such a way that they will be drawn to you, Lord? Thank you. Thank you that we can pray this morning in an hour where anti-Semitism is growing like no other hour in our history. The Jews are suffering persecution all over the earth. And many of them are going home and making Aliyah. Bless your people, we pray, in the name of our Jewish Savior, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Before you're seated, can you turn to the east and face Jerusalem and just extend your hand towards the land of Israel and just go ahead and speak a blessing. Go ahead and speak a blessing. We pray for the shalom of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Shalom be within your walls. Prosperity be within your towers. For the sake of my brethren and my companions, I will, I will now say shalom be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our God, I will seek your good. I will give you no rest, Abba Father Yahweh, until you, make, until you establish Jerusalem, until you make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Shalom be upon Israel. Blessed be Israel. My heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they would be saved. Save your people Israel and save the nations. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. And now we turn to the second category. The sins of our nation. Human trafficking. As we talked about last week historically the united states was the purveyor of the slave trade and we stacked bodies yes. on ships in ways that we would not even treat animals in joel chapter 3 verse 3 it says, they have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Joel chapter 3, verse 6, the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the Greeks. And so we, we have participated in the turning of African people into commodities and breeding them like cattle. And selling them at auction. Oh God have mercy. Oh God have mercy upon us. So I'm going to ask you. To stand with me. One more time. And let's repent. Of the sin. Of slavery. 
Oh God, we cannot imagine being put on a ship and being so desperate to get off the ship that many jumped in the ocean to perish. We cannot imagine being treated worse than cattle, worse than pet dogs, not being given facilities to use the restroom, not being given water and food, being sold off at auction. But Father, our nation has been guilty of treating people as cargo, of treating people as merchandise. And Father, when we should have been sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with them, we were hitting them with the lash. And we Christians in the South, historically, were the worst. Oh God, forgive us. Forgive us for not showing the love of Jesus Christ. Forgive us, oh God. We repent. We repent for treating people like animals and worse. Oh God, we repent for selling off the children yes. from the parents. Oh God, we repent for whipping them and beating them. And treating them worse than our dog. Oh God. Our hearts are grieving today. The recognition of the sins of our fathers. And the sins of our nation. Yes. God have mercy upon us. Yes, God. God have mercy upon us. And so Father. Instead of cursing them. We choose today to bless. We choose today to bless all those who are of African descent. Yes. We choose today to bless them. Yes, and we choose today to treat them with kindness and brotherly love. And we choose today to bless them. To bless their coming in, their going out, their rising up, their sitting down. And to treat them with the love of Jesus. Yes, God. We choose today to bless them. Oh God, have mercy upon us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. And now Pastor Sandra is coming to lead us in a prayer for modern human trafficking, child, child labor, labor slaves, sex slaves, sex trafficking. She's going to lead us in a prayer of repentance for modern human trafficking. So we do not just do open, just empty prayer. I want you to understand the numbers we're looking at. There's an estimate of 40 plus million slaves across the world today. 90% of the women and children who have ended up in sex slaves were victims as childhood sexual abuse before they were even recruited. We're talking an estimate of 800,000 people are illegally trafficked across our international borders every year. 161 countries affected by human trafficking. 1.2 million children are enslaved through forced labor exploited in the sexual industry every year. There's 54% of the modern day slaves are recruited by strangers and 46% of them uh, are recruited by people they know. 78% of modern day slaves are in labor industries while 22% are in sex industry. 55% of modern day slaves are women and children 45% are men and boys. 26,000 of them are children under the age of 18. And a lot of the numbers are estimates because it's underground. 
it's hidden away. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we come before you today. We bow, Lord, in a morning of repentance. Lord, with our own families, God. The sin of our own family. Our own selves, God. Our church. And the sin of our nation, God. For the human trafficking. For the modern day slavery, God. Your word says in Psalms 103.6. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all those who are oppressed. And today, God, we come and ask you to forgive us for not stepping up and speaking out for those who have been caught in this evil and wicked trap, God. Forgive us as we have either closed our eyes or have been ignorant to what's been going on in our communities, in our states, in our nation, God, as well as the world around us. Open our hearts and our eyes to see from your perspective, God. And to stand against these injustices, God. Stir our hearts and our our officials, God, and our judges. And all those in authority to reach out for those who are being mistreated and abused. Help us to each, God, to research and do our part in mirroring your love to these, God. Help us to see them, Father. Help us not to close our eyes and not even pay attention. God, help us to know the signs of those things, God, that only you could reveal to us. Father, for the children and the women and the men who have been locked into this. We pray for their deliverance, their healing, and complete freedom. We pray not only for their physical freedom, but their spiritual freedom of each one, God. Because John 3, 16 tells us that whosoever will come to you can know true freedom through Jesus Christ. You are the answer. May they see your love flow through your children in unseen measures, God. Lord, let us be the open vessel to found that they can stick their cup under God and drink deep of your love and your, and your healing and your deliverance and your freedom, God. May each one come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because your word says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and are burdened down, and you will give them rest. Father, in 2 Samuel 22 and 2, he, you say, The Lord is their rock and their fortress and their deliverer. Yeah. May the children and the adults know true deliverance. Yeah. In Galatians 5.10, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. God, may that be us, God, that we will stand for these, God. That we will reach out and lay hold, God, in love, Father, for those, God. And even those who are using them to make the prophet God help us to illuminate your love and your presence God that they will run to you father and turn loose God of that which they have been a part of and father that by the Holy Spirit's leading may they see their divine purpose for their lives God help us to see them God Help us to walk with you in such a way that, Lord, we illuminate the presence of God that will draw them from darkness to light. We give you praise, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we move to the final category of sin that we're going to focus on today. The sins of our nation. And that is the shedding of innocent blood. Joel chapter 3 verse 19. They have shed innocent blood in their land. No wonder God talks about in 2 Chronicles 7 14. The healing of the land. Because innocent blood. Abel's innocent blood cried out from the ground. And so many people have had their blood shed when they have been innocent in our land. Let's start with the Native Americans. 
by the close of the Indian Wars in the late 19th century, fewer than 238,000 indigenous people remained. A sharp decline from the estimated 5 million to 15 million living in North America when Columbus arrived in 1492. So genocide is defined as the intentional act to destroy a people, usually defined as an ethnic, national, racial, or religious group in whole or in part. We know that the Nazi, Germ the German, Nazi Germany committed the Holocaust and killed 6 million Jews and 10 million people. Well, we did the same. It would seem it may have just taken us a little bit longer. Broken treaties. Over 300 government treaties that were broken by the United States government. We put a bounty on their heads and said that if you bring us their bodies, we'll give you a reward. And it became commonplace to use certain body parts as souvenirs. They were slaughtered. Women, children, Davy Crockett said, we shot them like dogs. I'm going to ask everyone in the room who has some Native American ancestry to stand to your feet. Would that be possible? Cherokee or any other tribe, you have ancestry that is Native American. Now I'm going to ask the rest of us to stretch our hands towards these and repent of the sins against the Native Americans. Can you join with me? Father, we repent for the shedding of innocent blood. All of the people who were slaughtered, all of the Native Americans who were killed mercilessly like dogs, Oh, Father, we repent for our sins. Father, we call them our sins because they are the sins of our ancestors. And they are the sins that still affect the Native Americans today. So they are our sins. Oh, Father, we repent for all of the broken treaties when we took advantage of the Native Americans. Oh God, we repent because you sent us to the Native Americans with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but instead of winning them to Christ, we slaughtered them. We killed them. Oh God, no wonder so many reject the good news of Jesus Christ today because their ancestors were slaughtered by so-called Christians. God have mercy upon us. We repent today and we, we choose to bless now the Native American people. We bless their coming in, their going out, their rising up, their sitting down. And we, we proclaim that they are the heritage of the Lord and that they have a destiny and a plan and a purpose that is from God. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have called them, O oh God, to be around the throne of the Lamb throughout eternity, singing praises. And so we proclaim your blessing over them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now we're going to talk about the modern day shedding of innocent blood. 
the children of abortion. In the U.S. in 2016, there were 893,000 abortions. That is about 2,400 per day, 2,500 per day. 15% of pregnancies in Tennessee end in abortion. For black women, 29% of pregnancies end in abortion. Psalm 106, verse 38 says, They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, and the land was desecrated by their blood. O oh God, heal our land. But this is the promise of Joel chapter 3, verse 21. Their blood guilt, which I have not pardoned, I will pardon. So God is even willing to forgive the shedding of innocent blood if we repent. So I'm going to ask Denise to lead us in a prayer of repentance for abortion. Dear Heavenly Father, my words fall short. But I know that you are full of grace and mercy. So I ask you, dear God, please forgive us for over 16 million abortions since Roe versus Wade in 1973. Please forgive us for voting for platforms or parties that are pro-choice or pro-abortion thus giving them our consent to abort, abort millions of young lives. Please forgive us for wanting convenience instead of giving birth to and raising a child. Please forgive us for loving the monies that are made from these abortions more than we love human life. And now we have allowed the atrocity of partial birth abortion where babies are killed right before they are born. God, forgive us. Please forgive the church for not providing more options for these mothers who felt like they had no other option than abortion. Please forgive the church for looking down our noses at those women and young girls who have had abortions Instead, we should have been wrapping our arms around them and helping them to heal. God, forgive us of these things. Show us how to right these wrongs and put an end to abortion in our land. And help us to be salt and light in our city, our county, our state, and our country, in our world. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Joel chapter 2 verse 13 says, So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to Yahweh your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Verse 14, Who knows if he will turn and relent? And leave a blessing behind him. In Second Chronicles 7 verses 13 and 14. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So today we recognize that the forgiveness of our sin is not based upon our repentance. The forgiveness of our personal sins or our corporate sins or the sins of the church or the sins of the city, the county, the state, the nation, the, the forgiveness of those sins is not based upon our repentance. Yes, we need to repent. But the forgiveness of those sins is based on the grace and the mercy of an almighty God who is slow to anger and of great kindness and he relents from doing harm. 
He will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sin. And He will heal our land. Many of us today may wonder, is it too late for America? Is it too late for America? But as long as there is a righteous remnant crying out to God, crying out to Yahweh, there is still hope for America. So as we close out our time together, I am going to ask you to stand to your feet and to cry out to Yahweh with all of your heart, with all of your mind, your soul, your spirit, your strength. Cry out to God because our hope is in Him. Let's cry out to Him together right now. Oh God, we cry out to You. You are gracious. You are merciful. You are slow to anger. You are of great kindness. Oh God, you forgive sins. You relent from doing harm. You are a God of forgiveness. Oh God, and we exercise that forgiveness today. We forgive everyone who has wronged us personally. We forgive everyone who has wronged this church corporately. We forgive everyone right now in Jesus' name. And we ask that your forgiveness would flow, would flow to us personally, would flow to us as a church, would flow to us as a city, and as a county, as a state, as a nation. Oh God, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. We cry out to you because you are the one that can do something about our situation. Oh God, as we face COVID-19 and as we face all of this that is facing us as a nation. Oh God, we cry out to you today to intervene in our lives to intervene in our city, to intervene in our county, to intervene in our state, to intervene in our nation. But God, most of all, intervene in your church. Raise up your church for such a time as this. Raise us up to stand in the gap. Raise us up to build up the wall. Raise us up to be watchmen on the wall. Oh God, raise up your people for such a time as this. And then Father, we pray for healing for our land. Oh, God, heal our land. Hear the cries of the innocent blood and bring an end to abortion in our lifetime. In Jesus' name, hear the cries. In Jesus' name. And heal our land. Oh God, it may be too late for America, but we are not giving up. You still have a righteous remnant here. And as Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, and you would have even spared them for ten righteous. Father, we pray for the United States of America that you would spare your people, O God. In Jesus' name, we cry out to you. And we draw near to you with all of our hearts. I'm going to ask us to just spend some time right now just in devotion to the Lord as we close.
All I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is lay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. Would you raise your hands and let's sing that one more time. All I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is lay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands, as I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. All I want to do, all I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is lay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands, as I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. All I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is lay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle all the fire within me, Lord once again oh rekindle the fire lord once again oh rekindle the fire lord once again hallelujah let's give god praise hallelujah thank you lord Thank you, Lord. For there is a change that is coming to the body of Christ. Hearts are softening. Necks are bending. Souls are being fired up with my fire from my presence. I sense a change in the attitude of the body of Christ today, and I am well pleased, so says the Lord, for my presence is among the humble. My presence is not with the proud. I sense a turning in the hearts of my children. Some are not turning yet, but some have begun to turn. Oh, my people, I cry out to you as you have cried out to me.
Turn to me with all of your hearts. Turn to me away from those things that have held you captive. And I will be your God and you will be my people. I sense the change among you today. Let this be the beginning of change and transformation in your hearts and in your souls. Let this be the beginning of change and transformation in your minds. For I love the humble, but I battle against the proud. Therefore, I am calling you to humility today, says the Lord. I am calling you to walk humbly before your God. And I will exalt you in due season, so says the Lord. Let's receive this word from the Lord today. Let's humble ourselves one more time. Let Those of us that can, let's get down on our knees one more time and humble ourselves before we close this service. Oh, God. We are humbled by your presence. We are humbled by your presence, oh God. Oh God, we know that we don't have the power in ourselves to change. But God, you have begun a change in us today. Oh, help us to not lose it tomorrow. Oh, God, help us to not lose it this week. Oh, God, help us to be truly changed, not just stirred, but truly changed in your presence as we walk humbly before you. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's just lift our hands in worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords right now. Thank you, Father. 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 For my work of transformation has begun. Therefore, yield your lives to me. Submit your lives to me. Change your lives in my presence by the power of my Holy Spirit. For I am at work in you. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Present your bodies 
as living sacrifices to me, and I will set you on fire with the fire of my presence. I will set you on fire with the fire of my love, and you will reach out to others and tell them of my love and show them my love. I have begun the work of transformation this day, says the Lord, but you must listen to me. You must hear my voice. You must walk according to my spirit. You must be led by my spirit and stay sensitive to me, so says the Lord, for I am beginning a work of transformation in my church today, and this fire will burn brightly beyond today into the tomorrows if you will but submit and yield your lives to me, so says the Lord. We believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit. We believe the Holy Spirit still speaks today. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit found in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 and 14. We're thankful that God still speaks today through the gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I'm going to ask everyone who believes that this was a word for you or for our congregation to raise your hand and signify that right now all right let's submit and yield our lives to him right now father many times we're tempted to bow before idols many times we're tempted to bow before the idol of money or before the idol of our jobs, or before the idol of entertainment. And Father, we have set ourselves apart during these weeks leading up to this solemn assembly. And some of us have fasted and sought you in prayer and weeping. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would please prick our hearts and call us to continual prayer, to continual fasting. Oh God, help us to submit and yield our lives to you every week, every month, every day. Oh God, help us. Help us, I pray, to be crucified together with Christ. To put to death the works of the flesh by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Church, I want to thank you for being willing to be here today. And I want to thank you for being willing to participate in our first ever solemn assembly. I know today has been different, but sometimes different is good. And I thank you for being willing to join together with me. I thank all those who have tuned in via live stream and via the conference call. Let's thank them for joining us right now. Thank you so much. Let me remind you briefly of our offering to Ministry to Israel. If you want to leave an offering in the back today, you can simply make your check payable to Parkway Church of God and make a notation on your check or on your envelope, Ministry to Israel or MTI. And I want to thank all of you who are tuning in via live stream or conference call and everyone that is here. So many of you have been faithful in giving your tithes and your offerings. And 
And I just thank God for each and every one of you. And I just encourage you to uh, make yourself available of giving by any of the means that I mentioned previously. The table in the back, our website, parkwaychurchofgod.org, our Tithely app, or by mail, Parkway Church of God, 1103 Dolly Parton Parkway, Sevierville, Tennessee, 37862. Uh, I just appreciate you all so much. It's an honor to be your pastor. And I want us to close out today with the priestly blessing. Brother Joe is going to come at this time and bless us with the priestly blessing. Let's all stand and receive this blessing from the Lord. I love you. God bless you. Shalom. I don't think it would be out of order to say thank you to Pastor Philip and Denise for doing what he's done here today. It's not easy for a pastor to give up a church service and call people to prayer. But thank you both so very much. I know God has honored this. The Bible says God told the priests, when you call a solemn assembly or when the Jews gathered together, before they left, God said, I want you to place my name upon them. It's a very powerful thing. And so the high priest was instructed to pray a prayer, which I'm going to pray now in Hebrew and then in English. Would you just hold your hands out to receive? Aaron, the first high priest, of course, stood before the people and he prayed this. Yivareka ka Adonai vishmareka. Yair Adonai panavaleka viakuneka. Yisa Adonai panavaleka viyasemleka shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you, saints.